four, three, two, again, true. Hello and welcome <laughs> to the biggest race in the country right now, the Ulster Swifters Chase Race. Last time I checked, 437 people that signed up, but I think there's even more now. We are live on Killing Cycles YouTube channel and WinMac PC's Facebook page. And also, go easy on us here, this is our first time streaming and commentating. And there's lots to do. Uh, I'm not alone, Ross Blaney is here with me, he's the main man behind the Ulster Swifters. Say hello, Ross. Hello, Ross. How's it going, Mark? <laughs> Thanks for the introduction. All good. Um, I'm going to just basically turn it over to you here, and you can tell us about the tonight's race, Ocean Lava Cliffside Loop. All right. Yeah, no problem, no problem at all. Um, thanks for having us on anyway. Um, bit of crack, bit of fun. Adds a wee bit of a highlight to a, a boring Swift live stream, basically. Because if you're not a cyclist and not on the Swift, it's totally pointless watching one. I <laughs> used to tell you the truth, it's not the most exciting thing in the world to watch. But hopefully we have a wee bit of a commentary and help you get through the whole event. Um, tonight's race, this is the third edition of our Tuz Chase race. Um, we went live two weeks ago. We were basically doing the races on a meetup option via the companion app. You're going to be 100 riders, so it started to get really, really busy on that. Uh, so we started, obviously, we started pestering Swift and then Fetty gave us a race. So this is the third race. We're on the Ocean Lava Cliffside Loop. Uh, it's quite a hard course, to tell you the truth. It's the last first two rounds we were on were pretty flat. So this has a, a climb in it. You're talking about three to four minutes for a normal person to get up. So I reckon the bunch will split the bits in all the groups. Uh, the race itself basically is uh, it's 29 kilometers in length and distance basically. So you're talking about one and a half laps and we've got a hilltop finish on the climb the last time up. Sounds fantastic. Better to be watching rather than racing. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> There's uh, four minutes 20 till the D group starts. So, do you want to talk about the new league that you're doing? Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, we've got a new league starting from next week. Uh, it's a Tuz, it's our first ever league basically. Tuz went their racing league. It's an eight week league basically, every Wednesday night, 7 pm. There's going to be a race on. It's, we're still using the, the chase format, the handicap format. So you've got four groups. D group, go off first. So many minutes later, C group, B group, and then finally the, the fast boys in the A group. Um, your best six rounds will count in the overall league. So you can miss a couple of rounds if you can't make it, for instance. Um, we're going to have teams and individual results. I've had quite a lot of questions about the team competition. It's pretty basic. Um, you can have as many on a team as you want, but your top three from each round will count towards the team competition. There'll be a team competition in every category, so A, B, C, or D. Uh, there are Swift Swift teams on Swift itself, or obviously fast Swift par, but we're trying to encourage obviously club teams to come along and give this a rattle as well. So for instance, my own club in Bangor, North Down Cycling Club, we're going to be putting in a wee team as well. Um, we've mixed your riders, D riders, C riders, B riders, I think with maybe one or two A riders. Uh, so it'll be good fun. Best three across the line, score the points. Uh, the overall, there'll be an overall category for obviously A, B, C or D individually. And then there'll be the overall competition for the, the chase format as well. There'll be a link for that, so that'll be open to everybody. Uh, starts next Wednesday, 7 p.m. <laughs> so let, let's hope. We'll see how we get on. We'll if everybody we likes on. this stream, I'll do more. <laughs> if everybody says it's rubbish, I'll get to race it. <laughs> uh, we have two minutes roughly to the D start. Um, I'm just going to get my screen sorted out here. If Ross has anything else he wants to say yeah, while I'm okay. doing that there. Uh, basically, for the, the league itself, guys, if you are going to take part in the league, it's important you sign up to the Swift Par. It's a third party website. In fact, I've just told it's owned by Swift now as well. But it's free to join up. We're going to use that as the base the rules on as well. It has a really set format for rules and Swift for racing. 
Uh, so it's important you, you, you weigh yourself on a set of scales, not in your head or when you were 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Put your correct height in it as well and uh, go from there. Basically set yourself up an account. Join one of the Swift teams if you've got a club team. Make sure you join the Tuz as well. It's also Team Ulster Swifters on Swift Bar. And it, it sort of takes, takes care of all the results for us as well. There'll be updates posted on the, the Swift Bar website. Uh, all the different rounds, you'll be able to see who's entered beforehand. You'll be able to see, uh, there's a, we call it the naughty list every week, basically who's entered the wrong category, basically. In other words, who all the sandbaggers are. I did see If you're an A rider, you shouldn't be riding a C. 28 <laughs> in the wrong category tonight. Well, when I looked just before we came on, I, on there here, it was, there were 32 in it. Oh, it's so For goodness sake, how hard is it to look at... How hard is it to look at your Swift profile and see what category you are? I also seen a few A riders in the C <laughs> groups. I seen that myself. There was a few wee messages sent, private messages sent our own from a few boys, and hopefully the guys doing it have wised up. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're trying I... to make it fair. I know Swift racing can be a bit of the wild, wild west, so keep it as fair as we can. Yep. So I'm going to transition over to the main screen. And hopefully sound and stuff's good. Good stuff. 15 seconds to go. My job here is to click on the rider. So we're just following each rider. You can click on anyone. There's some amount of riders here. I'm seeing 56 riders so far in the D category. Right, here we go. We're off. I just seen someone flash up 9 watts per kilo. 9.4 watts per kilo. That's strong for a decap. <laughs> <laughs> These boys aren't holding back here. Not at all. Mr. Chapman here, putting the hammer down from the gun. He's gone. That's normally the hardest thing with the Swift races, the first five to ten minutes from the, the start are the hardest yeah. you'll ever do, basically. It's a wee bit like riding a cycle cross race. It's just so hard. You're basically, you get a tap countdown. You can join the starting pens from up to about 15, 20 minutes beforehand. You can go in, you can warm up the starting pen. And then it counts you down 10 seconds down to zero, and then it's just go. Yeah. It's not like a normal race where you're, you're starting from a standstill. You're pedaling. Yeah, you, you, the you best way to start is... Go ahead. Go ahead. You just cruise off in a normal the best way is very much so right yeah. this is totally different this is flat out from the gun if you're doing your watts and uh they get off the line in a good position you need to be doing plus of 350 450 watts to even start with and then try and hold that for the first 20 30 seconds if you can <laughs> so you right here well above caught. threshold for the first few <laughs> all the way past them i think me and ross have a slight delay of a couple of seconds that's why we're talking over each other here we just have to we'll have to work out work that out this course tonight there's a wee as you leave the start pen there's a wee bit of a rise the riders are on at the moment it's not much it only goes up to about three percent but if you're not in the middle of the group it can really um stretch the group out and if you lose a draft and swift it's good night yep. you're not seeing the front again Definitely Unless you're great. super strong. So the handicaps, Ross, three minutes and the seas are off. They are tonight. Yeah, it's going to be tough for the, 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 the D group to stay away tonight. Um, it's quite a hilly circuit. Uh, there's two, like I say, there's one main climb. If anyone's ridden Swift before, it's a starting climb of the Epic KOM. But once you get across the bridge, about quarter of the way up it. None of the epic cat the climb continues on for about another fifteen minutes or so. Right. But this here, we're gonna hang a left just before we go up the Epic KOM. And it's a new road on Swift. This course was only launched in the December update. Yeah. So if you haven't updated your Swift account, do so you'll be able to ride this road. It's actually a really nice road to ride around on. I don't think I've ever ridden it. I've, I've ridden it a couple of times. I've never raced on it. I was riding around and some of the guys were on this car talk and they said, oh, this doesn't make a good race course. And I went, all oh, right, it's got a hill. I mean, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of guys hate the hills. Anything over a minute. 
Oh, I know. I'm one of them. That's, uh, <laughs> anything over a minute and a half, and I'm out the back. <laughs> right, where are we? 6.1 watts per kilo here. That's big wattage for a D rider. Uh, standard D category is up to 2.4 watts per kilo. So anybody pushing that watts is obviously in the wrong category. So we'll maybe jump back a wee bit and see. <laughs> I'm just going to flick back until I can see uh, D or C riders. Sorry. So there's the first C rider. So they've made up 30 seconds already. Uh -huh. To the last rider in the D. That's quite a gap already. Yeah. I really start paying. We have to wait five minutes till the B start. Yeah, it's great. It's great to see the, the mix of riders as well in the D category. There's, a, I just noticed in the start list, there's a. Kevin Walsh signed on his racing tonight. He's riding for Blarney Cycling Club. Like that's obviously right down the south of the country. So it's not just yeah. guys in Ulster racing tonight. There's guys from all over Ireland, which is great to see. Just hang with these leaders here for a while, see what they're doing. Heart rates up high there, 181. Mr. Andy, Andy Flannery, I know him well, oh, right for Phoenix yes. Cycling Club. We'll give him a ride on. We and him go way back. <laughs> <laughs> Me and him go way back. I remember remember riding the Tour of North back in the mid 90s with Andy and myself and him and uh, I think Paul Kane at the time got up the road in the break one day and the both of us were fit for enough and we were hanging on, making up the numbers basically and the break stayed away. And the, the three of us got like, I think about top 10 or top 15 in the stage, but then the next day, in the first 3k, I think we both, all three of us went out the back. <laughs> <laughs> I came in about 30 40 minutes down in the, the winter, the next day stage, for goodness sake. <laughs> so it's good to see Andy on Swift giving it a rattle. Anyone else here? Uh, let me see, who else is here? I see uh, Emma Roberts racing there in the D category. There we go, there. It's great to see Emma, she's from the Titanic Water Cycling Club. Emma's husband actually races as well. I think he's in the C category. Like Collie Roberts as well. Going well. It looks like the D group have bunched up well here, so. Yeah, there's nobody flying off. The aim of the game stay together, stay away. Yeah, my friend, what's so? Go back here and see where the C's are. A few guys on our own here. Still two minutes, sir. Three minutes thirty. <laughs> it's funny as, as the obviously it takes there's a wee bit of a lag in the, when the starts go basically. So by the time the groups got up to speed, uh, I know the gap was it, was it two minutes or three minutes? It was three minutes three. Was it at the start tonight between the, the, between D minutes. and C three yeah, minutes. So yes. Just, yeah. So the C's are eating into that, that gap already. So they are that, and they haven't even hit the climb yet. Looks like. Have we grip away here on their own? Yeah, roughly seven, seven seconds away from the next group. I'll see it's a guy from my club there as well and uh the D carry Ronnie Andrews. Great to see him on Swift. There we go. Oh. He's in the chase group. I think I lost Kenneth. And we have lost Ross, I think. You there, Ross? Yes, here. Just back. A wee bit of, Good. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Got you now. Brilliant. It must be that Wi Fi. Where are you, Banger? I am. <laughs> it must be that old Wi Fi down in Banger. <laughs> 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 Just saying, it looks like the A Riders have left the start pens yep. as well there now. So they had seven, the That's all. seven minutes. Seven minutes. It sounds quite a lot, but. 
the Seven. standard in the A riders yeah. is is unbelievable. Like some of the guys are really really fit, like really fit. Any name dropping for A riders? Oh, guys, look out for tonight. You've got obviously Lindsay Watson. He's probably one of the strongest riders in Ireland and uh, on the road, basically. Definitely. But he's taking well the Swift. Well, uh, another rider to look out for is Nathan Keown. Young rider, basically. Really, really good talent. So he is very young still. But uh, I think, was it last year? Not last year, the year before. He was still a junior. Yeah. And he took the yellow jersey in the junior tour of Ireland that year, which was a phenomenal ride. Because one of the riders riding that year went on to win the World Championships in Harrogate in Yorkshire. And he now rides for Trek, right Pro Tour team, Quinn Simmons. So Nathan was able to mix it with that, that sort of standard, so he was. Uh, we've got the Mountain Bike Supremo, Glenn O'Brien in the A group as well tonight. Is he on this mountain bike? Mr. Fast Track. <laughs> I don't know about that. He might, he might need the mountain bike for the wee growl road after the climb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking down now, and we're down to a minute and ten between the D's and the C's, so they're making up good ground. Well, I think they might come together just before the top of the climb then, by the sides of it. Yeah, it's roughly that dirt with those big groups. A few guys away here now. Three seconds. They're on the climb now, 4%, so it's obviously splitting them all up. I think this is just before, this is just after the Italian Village. There's a wee Italian Village you go through on this course. And then you hang a right at the top of this wee climb, so doing a short kicker. There's still a few kilometres to go before we reach the main climb. I think the main climb starts eight and a half kilometres into the race for the D group. Okay. So we've done about, was it about six, six kilometres yeah. now? Yeah, so there's a wee bit to go before the climb starts. That's the thing about this course. Normally when you hit a climb, you've got a nice descent straight after. With this circuit, it, it, there's no descent straight after it. It's a real hard couple of kilometres. It's a false flat. The road meanders up and down a wee bit. Right. Uh, so when you, after the massive effort of climbing, there's no let up. You're still on the gas for another two or three k's. And then eventually you'll hit a long descent hard left hander across the bridge and then there's a few kilo, about a kilometre and a half descent you can get a short break uh, not many people know about it on Swift but if you keep an eye on your speed if you go above 57 kilometres per hour and you're on a, a downhill greater than 3% if you stop pedalling your avatar will go into like a, an aero tuck but like Chris Scruton sitting on the top tube sort of thing <laughs> But it go. means you keep up with the speed and uh, you get sucked along You get a wee short, short rest. Yeah. It's important to get your rest in these races, Flips, because you're constantly, it's not like outside, but you're sort of coasting along. You're constantly on the par on Swift, so you are compared to riding outside. Bit of insider information there. Oh, no. Right, let's see where we are. What about your own experience in Swift, Mark? What's it? I only started it this like? um, April, I think it was. I always had a smart trainer, right, but I okay. used trainer road. So, it's never really yeah. bothered too much with Swift. Um, started in April, I think it's brilliant. I'm out here most mornings, sort of half five, six a.m. It really has. It's it's been a, a godsend for a lot of people over the lockdown period as well. Especially when and it's icy outside as well, like last weekend or the past two weekends. You just jump in a group ride on Swift and talk away to people from all over the world and. <laughs> Time doesn't belong going in. Very true. There's so much a bit. There's so much availability. When you go onto the, the Swift Companion app and click events, it's frightening. You can basically ride a race or ride a group ride every four or five minutes if you wanted to. Yes. Yeah. There's so much availability. I see now. There's a few C riders. It's quite nice. The C's. Oh right. Okay. I'm starting to catch now. Yeah. Right, here we go now. Just go back to the seas and see what we're doing. Richard Kyan, we know him. Seas are moving rightly. There's some very strong sea riders. 
There's some guys in C that shouldn't be in C as well. There's but a few air raiders amongst the C's. <laughs> <laughs> I think Swift are working on an, an anti-sandbagging feature. And the sooner they get it, the better. <laughs> Some of the guys thinking, oh no, it's I'll just go and do an easy ride. And they end up sitting on the front and just destroying the race yeah. and just race ruining the race. Unfortunately for some of the, the standard guys who are in the lower categories. Let's make our way back up to the lead group here and see what's going on. Some some of the sea riders keep an eye out for during the race tonight is uh, probably one of the two of the strongest guys I know of in the sea category is Gregory Gout. Gregory rides for North Down Cycling Club, but he's originally from France, so he is. Right. Uh, he just ra he races predominantly on Swifts, and he's strong as an ox, so he has re really good sprint. Uh, he's a really good 30-second um, woman power man, so the wee shorter hills really do suit him. He can, even with his weight, he's a big guy like myself, he's over 90 kilos, so he can fairly fly up the hills, the short hills anyway. There he is, we'll uh, find another him. Guy, Gary Scott. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Gary Scott. Yeah, he'll be near the front of the group so well. Gary Scott as well, uh, rides for the Ireland team on Swift. Uh, I've seen his name pop up in quite a few races. He's, he's up there in the, the Cycling Ireland League too. Yep, find him also. G Scott's on your screen. Yeah, I think he was first sea rider last week around the Sean Salise. He seems to be a very strong rider. What about previous winners? Are they, did you see them in the entry list? I think I only seen... Ronan Bloomer, maybe? Not sure if they're both yes, here. Yes, I, I seen his name. He, he said he said he's a, a B rider now, so he is. He won the first round in uh, Walktopia Flat. I think he was second on the Sean's Elise. I don't know him myself personally, but he seems very, very strong. And looking at his uh, his profile stuff, he, he seems to come from like a, an athletics background. Right. Which is what you find quite a lot on Swift guys aren't predominantly cyclists. It's one of your pals on the screen now, Rick Hanna. Rick Hanna, yeah. Rick's obviously one of the guys that uh, helps run the, the Tuz, the Silster Swifters, basically. Uh, Rick's a great guy. Uh, he's so much into the techie side of the things as well. Him and uh, Pierce, basically, keep keep the do with all the Swift power and cor correlating all the results and so on. But them guys, this wouldn't be available. This wouldn't be possible to do, guys. So we'll give them a big ride on if you're watching. We'll on give the them a ride on right now. Yeah. Rick's a good racer himself. We came in together last week in the show on Zalisa and he ripped the legs on me coming in the last couple of kilometers. I had to bust a gut just to get around him in the sprint. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like the C's are just about to hit the climb. This is the climb of women in front and you can see the D riders in front of them as well. Yeah. Let's see what position these guys are on the road because it's <clears> easy to get mixed up here. So there's the C's, cats and the D's now. Yeah. This is right in the foot of the climb. We'll go up to the front here and just see. We'll follow. This lap they're doing tonight, it's it's 19 kilometers a lap, so it is. So we're going to do 1.5 laps roughly. And this last time up this climb, the finish line will be at the top of it. So we're going to have a hilltop finish tonight. So the finish line's on the top of this hill they're on now. It will be. As you get up the climb, you'll see there's a big uh, suspension bridge. And the finish line should be around the middle of it somewhere. It's not your standard finish line tonight. They had Swift use, uh, it's a bit, you explain it, it's like a ghost ghost line. Yes. It's blue. It's like a hologram sort of color, if you know that makes sense, basically. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean, yes. Just trying to see who's pushing big numbers here up this climb. If there's anybody in the red. I seen Gregory put a Gregory Gout put a comment on the Facebook page during the week there that uh, he wasn't too sure what way to approach this because it is such a tough climb. Do you go flat out and try and stay with the front group, or do you basically try and obviously being a heavier rider, trying to pace yourself in the climb, drop back a bit and wait for one of the faster groups coming through afterwards, which will probably happen. So what do you think? Are the A's going to catch? I think that tonight on this course, 
the A's are going to dominate. I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the last two, the, the last two rounds, um, the A's have got very, very close on flat courses. Uh, they were twenty seconds both weeks behind the win from catching, from making the catch basically, and that was in flat courses. So I reckon with this course and times two climbs, it's going to be very tight, very, very tight. I know there's a few air riders there that like a climb as well. Very much so. All the stick insects. (laughs) Yeah. Really high watts per kilos, which I'd never see them again. Maybe 20 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Not anymore. Let's see if I can see you can any. see it across this the suspension bridge now. Yeah, just thought we're on now. The guys are on. Yeah. I'm just so trying the to finish line should be around the middle of this, roughly. I'm just trying to filter back to see if I can see any bees. There's a bee. The A group, I'm just looking at my screen, the A group have just hit the bottom of the climb, so that's how far back they are. This guy's and they're catching strong, the tail yeah. enders off the B. Yeah, this guy's pushing B category, 5 watts per kilo. That's quite high. There's Chris Cameron. He's just caught there. Kenning cycles. There he is, the main man. <laughs> I know he's watching the stream as well. You can see the old heart rates. Chris, look at the heart Chris's rate. heart rate's up at high 180. It's frightening high. He's obviously on the limit yeah. here. Once he uh, once he sees he's on camera he's here, he'll, he'll pull out a sprint, 10 watts per kilo. <laughs> you can tell the guys who have their trainer difficulty set up where it should be, run about 50% up to 100%. Um, when they hit the climbs, your cadence will drop unless they've got a really really high ratio gears on their their turbo basically yeah right, let's see mbs are obviously taking up here we'll drop back and find some a's yeah go for it few other A riders to keep an eye out for tonight. Uh, Daniel Daly, another local guy from, rides from, from Belfast, rides for the Phoenix Cycling Club. Uh, he's been regular on our Wednesday night rides for a long, long time, so he has. Real strong guy. I remember riding uh, one of the WTLR, is it the time trial leagues on Swift? As a team time trial. Yeah. There's myself, Daniel, Big Gregory, and uh, Mr. Thomas Evans needs to introduction. A lot of people know who he is. The man, the Mr. Just the four of us. It was, yep, the man himself. Uh, it was around the, the Innsbruck, Innsbruck Inn circuit, which is like a, a replica of the, the World Championships in Innsbruck a few years ago, the wee short circuit they use. And there's a short climb on it called the, the leg snapper, or leg breaker, it's called. So it's only about a minute's worth of effort, but it's it's tough. Yeah. And obviously, Tommy and Daniel, both A riders, myself and Gregory, were B stroke C sort of standards. So. <laughs> It was a big effort for us, and you, you needed three riders to finish. It was four laps around the circuit. First time I hit the climb, I thought my heart was going to jump out of my chest. It was going that deep. Uh, second time I hit the climb, we just about hung on. <laughs> Next round, around the last lap, or I think it was the third lap, Gregory the distance. It was before, I can't even remember. It was all a blur to me that night, but Gregory the distance was means I had to hang in. I couldn't get dropped. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last time up, I could, did get distance, but the guys waited on me on the descent, and I got back on, and I was swinging. I came across <laughs> the line, and the taste of blood and everything, it was the worst experience of my life. I think the only good bit out of it was I got an FTP increase from sitting on the waves. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Daniel and Tommy, you bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> So these these air riders are trucking. Darnell Moore, obviously here. I did see Kevin Lynch. Kevin Lynch, another strong guy on oh, Swift. Yeah. A great rider on the road as well. If uh, I've raced with Kevin for a lot of years, and one of the most honest riders I know on the road. If you give me a break with Kevin, 
you never have to ask for him to ride through. He's normally shouting at me to ride through because I'm normally one hanging on. Like, but <laughs> uh, great guy, great guy, super strong and swift as well, which is great. And he seems to be doing a lot of training on Swift just with the bad weather and the lockdown and so on. So great to see him out there. There's Banging Lindsay. Head off the handlebars, Heck putting off. the effort in. Yeah, Lindsay so it looks like they've hit this this, uh, this rolling road, basically straight after the climb. You'll, you'll probably notice there's riders everywhere here now. Yeah. Big Jerry. In the right category this week. Lost here. Lost Ross again. You there? Trying to get Ross back here. Yeah, the Wi-Fi in Bangor must be really bad. That's twice now we've lost them. You back? Joy Ross. Can you still hear me, Mark? I can hear you. I'm back again. Nice Internet drops out, dropouts, the joys. Yeah. The sooner you sort my laptop out, the better. I know <laughs> Nicky, my wife's watching, so this is why I want the this is why I want the, the laptop updated. <laughs> Plug in an Ethernet cable as well. A little more dodgy Wi Fi. Yeah. I'm just going to make, make my true. way back up to the front here, <laughs> see what's happening. I just know on my screen that the, the B group have hit the descent now. I'm just watching the guys in the arrow tuck. Yeah, so there, there's roughly, I think, between what I'm looking at and what is live, around 20 seconds. Right, okay. Oh no, I clicked on myself. That's how easy it is. I'm to lap back around. <laughs> Let's see where we are here. This Some other obviously... riders in the D group to look out for. That's lead group there, for so we still have C. Uh... C's are leading, are they? Uh, C's and B. Yeah, C's and B's a mixture. Can't be that far now. That's a strong ride from some of the B riders to get across to that group. Yep. On the first hill. See the way it just has me sitting at the top here? Just click on that and it's back to the yep. starting pen. Go down here and see how far the A's are away. I'm just I'm with the front front group here basically. There's uh Bernie Bassett. Who's in the front group? <laughs> 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 we all know who that is. Uh Conrad Kettles, Paul Toner, got Adam Ward, young 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 Adam, I think he's only he's he's still in the schoolboy ranks, so he is. Uh but great re rider, very, very strong. Uh Gary Scott the mentioned before is up there. Gregory Gouds there. Nigel Watt. Quite a few strong B C riders. We've got a couple of Bs mixed in there too, so that's the, some ride they get across in that climb. Yeah, they they P the A riders Ritchie aren't far. As well. I think they'll definitely catch.
We're just coming up with them. Chris Cameron there, you're about to get caught again. Yeah, it looks like there's a there's a B group. There's a... Another rider to look out for tonight. Uh, young rider as well, young Carl Rocket. This finish should suit him. He's very, very light. So we fly up the hill. He's only a young lad, isn't he? Still hear me, Mark? Yeah. Can you hear me? I don't think you're hearing me. I can, yeah. I can hear you now. Hear me now. You turn your sound off. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Good. Jay Henry has to be Joe. Yeah, the A's are going to catch for sure, I think they're... I think that's the lead group up in front there. There's Kevin. So he said... Yeah, I'm nice. just watching them myself, so yeah. Yeah. So I'm also controlling the views that they see, so... I press a number key on the keyboard here. Change whatever view. Yeah. Go to the helicopter. Yeah, the tunnel, you're not going to see much. No. <laughs> They're underwater. <laughs> <laughs> I guess with the front group here, myself, and there's a mixture of uh, C and B rider, or C, uh, yeah, C and B riders together. Uh, you got young Carl Rocket. He's in the B group tonight. He's a very, very strong. He's actually the current Ulster under 13 road race champion. Under 13. So the, the finish should suit him because he, weigh, he weighs about. We have about four bags of sugar, so he'll fly <laughs> up the climb. Uh, all for Harkin here from Prime Coaching as well. Another strong B rider, a good climber, so he should be right up there near the finish if this, this group stays away. There's the lead group now. So what have we left? About 12k to go? Yeah, it's not far to go, basically. We're just sort of approaching where they started from in downtown Watopia at the moment. We'll go past the starting pens and then set out for the last half a lap. Yeah, them guys weren't long catching tonight. No. Who picked Maybe the course for tonight, you? A couple a little bit more generous. <laughs> <laughs> It was me. I, yeah. I picked all, uh, the majority of the courses. Um, for for the league, it's for the league itself. The eight rounds. I spent a few hours going through old Swift Par results, trying to get the work out the the handy. Some of the the courses. It's a good mixture. There's some flat ones. Uh, there's some hilly ones. And the last course, they've all they're all sort of around that forty five minute, um, sort of thirty k bracket. So they are. But the last one for the grand finale, it's a it's a big course, the out and back circuit. If anybody's rid, ridden that on Swift, it's about forty two kilometers, and you take in uh, two. Oh, we've lost you again. Top of reverse KOM, it's not over yet. You've another say three three and a half k's flat to the finish. So for a standard C rider on Swift, you're talking about. Still there? <coughs> we keep losing audio from you, Ross, I think. I can't hear you in my ears. I can hear you now, so okay. I can. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep. 
Lindsay. Who have we got? Lindsay Watson. Who else is here? Find our Glen. Where is he? Yeah, he must be in that group. And there's still a big bunch of A's. Haven't made the lead groups yet. There's Glen there. Got you back now, Mark. You just keep dropping in and out. It looks like this CB group's still away. Yeah. It looks like the CB group is still away. Another strong rider in the C group who's also in the front group tonight uh, is Podrick Dugan from Carn Wheelers. Has to be him there. That's Nathan, yes. Front grip is at 21.6 kilometers into the race, so not far to go. I'm just trying to. It's really easy to get lost here. I'm guessing Nathan Keown's on the front, obviously. Keep dropping out sound here, we're not up the Eurosport level just yet. <laughs> I see you're following young Nathan McKeown now. This front group seems to be quite big now. See, I don't think that is the front. Well, I suppose these guys are maybe lapping. I've got them up on my screen here. You've got uh, there's a couple of strong A riders have made it across. Gary Walker, Nathan Coon, yeah. Lindsay Watson, Pete, Pete McLean. Pete McLean from Mars Cycle Club was the, the first guy from Ireland to hold the, the Everstring record at the start of lockdown, so he was. Right. Did it on the Wicklow Gap. And trust me, he's no climber. <laughs> Not mind me saying that either. <laughs> <laughs> but he's as strong as an ox. He's a he's a, an a, a rider on the road, so he is. But he's absolutely strong in the locks. Very good swifter as well. So, you can obviously see my screen, Ross. I'm it's quite, quite an exciting finish here. Definitely. Lindsay's riding on the front now. They're, they're obviously coming up the lap. These riders. Yeah, I think I think that what he called the front groups come together. The B, there's A's, B's, and a few strong C's left in this right. group. They're not far away from the, the the final climb here to the finish. Don't see last week's winner or the week before uh, Justin Bloomer in this front group now. The climb might have been a bit much for him. Just going down now to see if I can see any of these guys.
We're just approaching the Italian village here for the last time. There's a wee bit of a climb up out of it, so there is. So you might see a few people getting detached before we even get to the main climb. The, the speed seems to be very, very high. There's only, I think there's 16, 17 riders in this front group. Yeah. All the guys in this front group will probably be some of the best climbers in the race, so it'll be interesting to see. See Jonathan Taylor from North Down Cycling Club. He's in this front group. That's a great ride from him. There's Iron Parks, Bomb Bridge. You see Lindsay Watson heading towards the front. Yeah. Yeah, they're sitting on about two percent. A couple now, of right? grip here in front. Looks like. Yeah, this is the wee climb up for the Italian village. So it is. It seems to be well stretched out. There's a couple of guys seem to be going off the front here. Guys are sitting high, five watts per kilo, six watts per kilo. You just, you've just caught a wee grip of lap. This grip, but it looks I like. like. To have lap them, yeah. That's hard to Roughly 4k to go, so we're not far away. No, not far at all. Gonna hang a right here. It'll be a bit of a downhill. It's sort of the last part of recovery before you hit the main climb to the finish. It's the lead rider here. What's his name? What bombs? What bomb? Yeah, socks for watts. <laughs> watts bombs. Socks for watts. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep an eye on Lindsay here. And who else have we got in the lead group here? Not the new. Nathan Moan. It seemed to have split that last week climb out of the Italian village. There's a wee group just behind now. At a handful of seconds. Yeah. Eight seconds the gap is, so there's a front group away. There's the lead group I'm with now. It is, yeah. Lindsay Watson driving it on the front. Yeah, he's gone. Or at least having a go. There's a few orange num a few orange numbers being pulled. So when you're your watch per kilo on the right hand side in the rider list. When that turns orange, that means you put a big, big effort in. Roughly two Ks. G Walker up here as well from Northern yeah. Ireland. Yep, yeah, you should be able to see the, the hill in front now. Not far from it. This is a strong front group. This is the first time since the the, the Tuz chase race has started that the A group have actually made the catch. So it's good to see. Just shows you you throw one hill into the yep. equation and it just totally splits the race to pieces. Young, another young rider in this front group, Nathan Mullen. I think he's from. Donny Gall, don't quote me in that now, but he's a very, very strong young rider as well. Be interesting to see who's going to be the strongest up this final climb and what way they approach it. We'll stick with these guys. I was going to go back there and see. It's about. Yeah, this is yeah, probably the. I would stay here just to yeah. see who this is going to be. The, the winner is going to be from this front group. What 
falling stairs. But then a big dig. And the chase group behind, you know, a really strong rider is uh, Fraser Duncan. Fraser represented the Northern Ireland Commonwealth Games in Glasgow a few years back. Here we go, 8%. Yep, yeah, this is the climb kicked in now. Yeah. We want to see a lot of orange and red like over Pete, here. Pete McLean's launched the. Uh, yeah, Pete McLean's went for it. Eight point seven watts per kilo. There's a long way to go to the finish, so he's, yeah. he's head out early. Looks like young Carl Rockets in second, trying to chase him down. He's, he's got a decent wee gap. Yeah, he has. He's really went for it. He's going deep. The watch per kilo sort of leveled off now a little bit. Yeah. So Lindsay Watson's just holding the fire power back. <laughs> yeah. Just following wheels. That, that so around this corner, idea. kicks up the percentage kicks up. You watch the top or right hand. There's six, ten, thirteen percent. That's up to you now. So obviously the, the turbo train will be re replicating the gradients as you go up. And you can see the suspension bridge in the, the distance. The there finish should be very close to it. I think we've less than a Big kid, Peter's though. got a three second lead here on this Watt Bomb fella. I'm not too sure. I think he's an English rider now. Just... Yeah, just trying to work out the best view so we can Nathan see. Nathan Kuhn, third on the road. Oh, it's very close. Yeah. Pete's only got a second now. And they're going for it now. Red numbers must be a finish line coming up. They're all in the red. Looks like Pete's held on for the win, has he? I think he has. Yeah, they're going for it. Yeah, it looks like Pete McLean, Art Cycling Club, gets the win. Nathan Kuhn, second. Never seen the Have imaginary finish the, line. Uh, about twenty minutes or so. No, no, it won't pop up unfortunately on our our view. You need to be in the race properly. Oh, you need to, to be in the race. The finish to see line. It. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But it seems to be right in the middle of the, the bridge there. That was a good ride by Pete McLean. Yeah, he took the win. I say there'll be riders stretched out all over the road here for the next 15 minutes, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even telling me positions now, so I don't know where we are. I think we'll end it there, Ross. You there? It's a hard finish, this. Really hard finish. Yes, I'm here, yep. I think we'll end it there, yeah. Yeah, that was a great race. Good to watch it was. God, I wasn't riding. <laughs> So that's why you wanted to join me. Exactly. <laughs> Anything over 30 seconds in a minute, I'm gone. <laughs> right. Thanks, that's us Thanks done. very much, Mark. Pre no worries. Appreciate Thanks for coming this. on. If I was here on my own, there wouldn't have been a lot of Great talking, stuff. so brilliant. Not a problem at all. Take it easy.